from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you. Really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 8. Six six wide open telephones on the Tom Like a Show on this Friday at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Anything goes at one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Chris on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi. Well, how are you? Great. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Um, I wanted to tell you that um, I first heard you because my son was listening to you. He listens to you all the time. He's thirty five, so you know when I come over his. TV instead of being on TV, it's on Tom Likas. Tom Likas, and I, I was um, at first. I well, I I don't really like the influence that you've had on his way of thinking about women. You know, how so? Um, well, I think your your generalizations are too too broad. I know that you. But we're talking uh, about broads, <laughs> and they're generally true. Um, when when you. You say there are always exceptions to the rule, which, of course, uh, is what my son argues to me when I say, I, I was, when I was young, I was hot, and I never, never looked for money from guys, or I always was self-supportive, and when I divorced two husbands, I just divorced them, I didn't ask for anything, you know, I just wanted to be divorced, and so... You understand that it isn't that way today, that there are very few women like that. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that that's true. I was a divorce attorney, and, um, boy, I'm all shaky. Why'd you stop? <laughs> huh? Why'd you stop? Um, I had to have a liver transplant. So I had to and that'll put a crimp in things. Pardon me? That will put a crimp in things. Yeah, it certainly does. But, um, but most women are, are just not like you. Well, I've met a lot of women who are getting divorces, and I've met a lot of them who are like me. And the women I've known throughout my lifetime... But what is the point of getting married with the divorce rate what it is? Why should a man get married? What's in it for him? Now, as a divorce attorney, you should know that the answer is not much. Well, it it depends on whether a man wants to have a family and, and really... Even then, uh, there's nothing in it for him. Yes, there's something in it for children, you bet. Yeah. Yes, there's something in it for women, but not a man. Well, why for a woman and not for a man? Because women get the bulk of the good decisions in divorce court when things are done. Well, that that, that upsets me very much. I, I, I don't believe in... Um, We're not talking about what you no. believe in. We're talking about what is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're and, right. And that you is, know yeah. that's the way it is. I know that's the way it is. So why would you want your but, son getting married? But because there are, there are other reasons to get married. Um, but but the like, point what, is, if there's no benefit to him, then why should he do it? Well, to me, the benefit of being married is is uh, having a family and being being belonging to each other and loving each other. But he seems to be pretty happy as he is. Yeah. Just yeah. the way I am. Yeah, but I think that you've really um you've really uh, made a made him think badly of women. When when I I don't think that most I don't women... think badly of women. I just uh I you know, uh, we shouldn't try to make a turkey fly. Women are good for what they're good for. <laughs> oh, and on. and not any more than that. <laughs> Women are great for fellatio. They're great for, uh, you know, feeling their breasts. But are they really good for discussing politics or yeah. sports? No. Generally, no. Or well, sports, you know. I can Generally, that. no. <laughs> so the point Generally is, no let's, let's enjoy women for what we can enjoy them for. We stop by. We have sex with them. 
and then we move on with our lives without wasting it on tchotchkes and knickknacks and bric-a-bracs, without wasting our money on purses and shoes and clothing, <laughs> without wasting our money buying draperies that'll get replaced again in a year. I don't like those much. I know I wanted them a year ago, but now I need new ones. I mean, the fact is, I've never been wealthier than when I'm alone. Yeah. And all of the women I've ever been involved with are doing much worse now that they're gone. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you that tells me something about the women that you've been with. No, it's not just the women I've been with. As a divorce attorney, you have probably heard the following statistic often quoted. And what it says is when a man and a woman divorce, the man's standard of living improves and the woman's decreases. Mm -hmm. You've heard that, right? That's probably because the woman is generally uh, left with the children. It's also because women are bigger spenders on crap. Yeah. Men are the savers, the investors, the planners. Women are the spenders, the spenders, and the spenders. That's true. I've always earned my own money to spend. But well, I'm your thinking... son can't marry you. No, no, but no. Generally no, speaking. No, I'm thinking you're making a very good point because my son is the, he's very frugal and all of that, and I'm the other way, but then I've always supported myself. So I think every woman should be self supportive. But they're not. And as a divorce attorney, you you would be intellectually dishonest to tell me that they are. Um, are there exceptions like you? Sure there are, but not enough. Yeah. Not enough, I agree. I agree so, so, you I, see, we, I, my commentary is not based on what should be, could be, would be, right. ought to be. Right. Uh, I'll never write a book called The Way Things Ought to Be. Right. Okay? I talk about the way things are. Right. And the advice I give is based on the way they are, not the way we wish them to be. And the way divorce court is going and the way the laws and the way the alimony thing is going, there is nothing in it for men to get married. Hmm. Well, see, my parents were married for 50 years and they were very happy. That was another that era. That was another era. But do, so do you think women... That was before general, women left the house to go to the office where other men would comment on how good they look with their cell phones, their text messages, their Facebook pages, their MySpace pages, their 17 email addresses. So you're saying that had women back in that era had more opportunity to be around men instead of being at home cooking, then they would have done the same? They would have been the same? As I have said about men... Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> the the likelihood of, of a man cheating has to do with what his options are. Yeah. And I think that's true for everybody. I think, well, for women, it's I think um, relationships are all about emotion. And for men, obviously, things are about sex. I don't, I, I don't think marriage is all about that, though. Right. Marriage is all about what property can I secure in case things don't work out. I don't I, think that with, when you go into a marriage, I don't think that... Really? Most, Try well, telling a woman to sign a prenup and see what kind of reception you get. Yeah, see, I would sign a prenup in a minute. Yeah, but uh, what do you think the average but, woman says when you say, here, take this to your attorney? I think she says that... But you don't you're, love me! That's right. And I think that would be the feeling I would get if somebody asked me to sign one. But that. my response Aren't my response is always, it's not that I don't trust you. I don't trust lawyers. Yeah. I don't trust <laughs> judges. Yeah, I don't either. Well, yeah. okay. So yeah. those are the people who start deciding who gets the knives and who gets the forks. You know that. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to leave it in the hands of that person? Well, my hope would be that when he gets married, he doesn't, or if he gets married, he, he finds a woman. Well, who, I would hope that, too. I would also hope that coming up in a few days, Santa Claus is coming down my chimney. I would right. hope that. Right. The fact that I hope for something doesn't mean it's going to happen. And, in fact, it doesn't make it likely. Yeah. Yeah. You're, the other thing I wanted to tell you was you're so good at arguing. It, even, even though I disagree with you. You're going to say what my parents said. You're going to say I should have been a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I, and you know what I said to them? I wouldn't want to take the pay cut. <laughs> right. You're, I, I find myself listening to your show all the time now when I'm in my car. Look at that. So, because um, you're very, 
you're very good at what you do and you and you get me all riled up sometimes and i like to get kind of hypers me up so you know that <laughs> i argue i argue with you even though i'm driving the car i'm like oh you blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> i'm like a good verbal crack in the ass yeah but when you're right you're right well thank you for that chris appreciate the call <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Rudy on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's up? Not much, Rudy. Uh, I, I'll tell you what's up. The volume on your radio. Let me turn that down, sir. Coming up in a few days, Santa Claus coming down. Uh, I'm sorry to go off uh, your topic, Tom, but uh, I'm a security guard. You know, I'm married. Like you did, I follow the Tom Like Show. And, uh... I just bought a condo. Congratulations on your new house. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm just closing escrow in 45 days. Me and my wife been doing my wife's been doing security for 25 years, and I've been doing security for uh, 30 uh, for two years. How old is your wife? My wife is uh, 44. How old are you? 33, sir. Holy cow! I I, mean, I literally follow the, the Tom Likas rule. What rule was that? To marry an older woman? Yes, sir. Did I say that? Well, you know, 101, don't get married under tw under 30. Well, I, I actually, I say don't get married at all. But if you must get married. Yes, sir. I got married and I just bought a condo in West Covina right next to a mall. Do you I'm have children? And uh, I'm going to close the escrow in 45 days. And I got the realty company to, to pay for all the escrow closing. Wow. Congratulations. By the way, attention advertisers, you too. Well, you know the deal. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Dean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you, doctor? Doing great, Dean. Hey, I like your show. been listening. Um, I just want to have a quick question. Uh, you know, I think it's not going to happen anytime soon or maybe in our lifetime. But let's just say that all the people listen to you and follow which, uh, what I've been doing, keep going out with attractive chicks and keep banging them without marrying them and uh, no kids. But if... Uh, all of us listen to you, then the world population would be reduced. Well, not really, because even in my best city, like like in Los Angeles, 6% of the men listen, 6%. Yeah. And that means 94% of them aren't listening. I might uh, tell you also that, that in that 94%, you have many poor and stupid people, and they love to breed, you know, when they're poor or but stupid. They, lo they will crank out kids by the busload. Well, I know. I, that's why I said that it would not be going anytime soon that way. And even if it did, uh, it would probably happen in America. But for a country like China, they keep flooding the world with the, you know, the, a lot of kids, even though one family would, would be allowed to have just one kid. But uh, I'm just saying that what if? Eventually, and we have more people. But again, that will never happen. There's no point in doing what if. It will never happen. Okay. It will never happen. I know it wouldn't, because there are a lot of people who are stupid enough just to keep doing otherwise. But anyway, Tom, could you take me out with Kobe? I love the girl who's doing the moaning. All right. Here you oh. go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one 800 5800 Tom. Let me get Tally on here. Tally is calling from Israel. She's listening to the online stream. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tally. Good to talk to you. I know. <laughs> um, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, I've been listening to your show for several days now. I'm sort of insomniac, so I'm not sleeping... Uh, at the time that the show is going on, what there. what time are we on the air in Israel? Uh, well, it's about two a.m. or so. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was wondering what your opinion is about the chances of a blind woman like me finding uh, a date with, you know, getting a date with a sighted guy. Oh, I think they're very good. 
Yeah. Sure they are. Are you hot? Uh... <laughs> Uh, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not in the habit of looking in the mirror. So. Well, hasn't anybody told you what you look like? Uh, yeah. They, they say I look good. Do you have a nice pair of knockers? Uh, sort of. So what do you mean, sort of? Well, uh, I think they're good. They're what, proportionate. What's your cup size here? C. C? 34 yeah. C? Something like that. 34 36? I think 34. 34 C. Yeah. It's, not, it's not bad. Uh, it's, it's all right. You know, it, it fits my size. I'm sort of petite, so it goes good. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I I think you'll be very popular. I'm just I'm just wondering because I always have a feeling like blind guys or uh, sighted guys are looking at me like, what do you do with yourself in your free time? How am I going to communicate with you? What am I going to do with you? And it's kind of weird because... Well, you're not you know, looking to get married, right? You're just looking to date, right? Yeah, I know. But that's the thing. They're like, you know, what are we going to do on our date? And I have to explain to them that... Well, you know, movies... Go to movies. Movies, there you go. <laughs> uh, so movies, sporting events, concerts, you'll do all that stuff, right? Yeah, for sure. No, right. Plus, what guys don't realize is, uh, like, for example, if you ever met me, I look exactly like George Clooney, which is fantastic. <laughs> I, it's a shame you'll never know how good I look. Yeah, you're pulling my leg, aren't you? Don't be so sure. Oh, I can't find out, can I? That's right. I couldn't even. I couldn't. That's even why I think you'll be. You put on your website. You, you know? will be very popular. You think so? Oh yeah. All right. I'll because because see, the thing is, if everybody figures out that they, they all look like George Clooney to you, <laughs> you'll have any, You can have your point. pick of any guy out there. Maybe maybe I should maybe I should use that line. You know, that's a good idea. <laughs> Thanks, John. I appreciate Tell it. Tell these guys, yeah, you know, pick a name, pick a name of any hot guy. Brad Pitt. Tell it, Brad Pitt. Tell tell the next guy. You know, to me, you look just like Brad Pitt. Ooh, that will make you feel good. That there's an opening line for a blind woman. Hmm. I like that. I think that'll work. Thanks, Tom. Tally, I'm here to help. By the way, how long have you been listening from Israel? Uh, well, throughout the week. Oh, just this week? How, how did you find yeah. out about our show? I was just uh, browsing some radio stations, and I came to this one. I, I missed those talk shows that I used to listen to when I was in the States. Where, where are you from originally? Uh, Israel, but I spent some time in Philadelphia and Boston. Oh, yeah, they got a lot of talk radio there. Yeah. For, for old people. <laughs> Yeah, true, but I'm young, so. <laughs> You're young and you need to get laid. Yes, I do. When's the last time you got laid, dear? Uh, uh, August. August? And and yeah. who was the lucky guy? Um, my ex. <laughs> Your ex? Your ex-husband? No, my ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend? Yeah, never been married. Is he good in the sack? He was. He was awesome. Really? Yeah. Are you a moaner yeah. or a screamer? Uh, a combination combination yeah that's a good thing but, uh, but you haven't gotten any in about four months and you need it i know it's not good for neighbors though you know they're not happy oh i yeah. uh, well, guess what that's their problem that's true well, that's a good point well i'm sure brad pitt is out there waiting for you dear all right i'm going looking all right you'll be good all right you too appreciate the call there we go should be screaming your name in hebrew very nice. All right, we'll take a break here. We'll come back. Joe Rogan is coming in to join us. Stay right there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. Hello. Hello. The Tom Likas Show. the Tom Likas Show. Here we are, heading into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and that whole holiday thing. And most of most of Southern California and probably most of the country is checked out by now. But not us. We're working. Joe Rogan's working. 
I'm here for you, Tom. Thank you, Joe. I'm here to help you get to the bottom of this chick pee peeing on your property. <laughs> okay? I've been brought in. I am an expert on crazy bitches. Really? I attract psycho chicks like a carnival attracts Puerto Ricans. All right? We are going to get to the bottom of this immediately. We are going to find out. We have we have very, very clear visual evidence of this woman and her vehicle. And if you haven't seen it, you can go online and it says, uh, woman urinates, urinates on Tom Likas' house. And uh, she's just squats right in front of the front door like the dirty little bitch that she is. <laughs> and she leaves a stink puddle of her filth. And then she steals his plants. It is a, just a terrible display. If I was her mother, I would be shocked. I would I would not be proud of my little girl pee-peeing on Tom Likes' front lawn. And her car is very distinctive. Bondo work on it, real easy to spot. So if you think you know a crazy bitch that might be into doing something like this, go on YouTube. And Tom, I believe there's a thousand dollars reward. Is that correct? There's a thousand dollar reward if you name the person, and we uh, give that. Um, I have LAPD working on this. I've got a detective, uh, mm-hmm. Detective Stone, who's working on this right now. And uh, if you give me a name, and it results in the arrest and conviction of this person, I'll pay cash right out of my own pocket. Cash, thousand bucks, American, yes. American money. Yes. Wow, that's strong. That's strong. Tom Likas steps up when it's important. <laughs> this crazy right. bitch. What do you think? Do you think Tom Likas doesn't have video cameras? <laughs> you, you're lucky he doesn't have ninjas. <laughs> you're lucky he doesn't have people just waiting in the bushes to cut you up. <laughs> peeing on someone's property. <laughs> what is wrong with people? If you don't like what he says, get your own radio show. Right. And complain about it. Exactly. You know, do what he does. Don't you understand what is happening? He is entertaining people that have been beaten down by women like you their whole effing life. All right? That's right. That's why he exists, because of women like you. If it wasn't for crazy bitches that are willing to go way out of the way and pee on a front door, you would have like 80% less to talk about. She proves my point. Exactly. Doesn't even understand. No. How dare she? I mean, everything I've said, she's <laughs> pissed at. She's everything I complain about. She just dropped her dumpy ass right in front of your front door. And just, just let it go. And you get a shot of that jello ass there right in front oh. of my camera. What a nightmare that must be under fluorescent lights <laughs> after you sober up. And then she's complaining already. You're leaving? Where are you going? Oh, where am I going? On with my life. Why does anybody ever ask why you're leaving? Would you really want someone to stay who doesn't want to be there? That's so crazy. Why you? If someone's leaving, you should just go, you leaving? Okay, that's cool. You know, get out of here. I don't want you here. You know, why would you leave? You're, you're leaving? That is like the most crazy way to think ever. Well, that's like when why they do are you the, leaving? That's like, like, they, why are you? That's why like, does anybody ever leave? That's like when they do the exit interview. You know, you ever quit a job and they, yeah. have, they give you the exit interview? Right. You know, uh, just want to find out if you were dissatisfied. Um you know, what what the reasons were. Then, of course, you can throw your boss under the bus and everybody you ever worked with. Yeah, that those get ugly, huh? When oh, you yeah. work in that corporate world and someone's been swallowing your poo for years and finally they get to just unleash on you. Oh. That's right. But where were they six months before that, cowards? Well, of course. How dare they? Oh, well, they were looking for another job. Or they were dealing with some crazy door peeing bitch <laughs> at home and they were distracted and <laughs> That's confused. That's right. If you got a crazy chick like that in your life, your whole life's a mess. We hear from those guys all the time, though. Oh, yeah. Well, there's more of them than there aren't. Because more people are dissatisfied with their spouse. More people are dissatisfied with their husband, dissatisfied with their wife. More people aren't happy with themselves than are happy. Because life's too difficult for most people to figure out. It's a gigantic, complex puzzle, and no one has a manual. No one has a, a, a book of how to do it properly. So most people screw it up. And so you go through life just miserable and depressed, and your, your best bet is to find someone who you can get distracted with. And you just hate each other and yell at each other. Where are you going? Did you hear about that chick the other day that shot at her husband and blew out his plasma screen TV? And oh, yeah. He was threatening to divorce me. Oh, I wonder why we do that. You're shooting at him, you know. <laughs> and she was, she was like using that as a justification. He wants to leave. Why do you want to leave? Oh, why does anybody want to leave? They want to leave because wherever there are sucks much worse than being away from wherever they are. It's very simple. Don't ask why people want to leave. That's right. Jesus, Tom. But they do. They say they and they stay there and they tolerate it. And they uh, there's people. There's people listening right now who are driving slowly. 
They Ugh. don't want to, you, ever been in that situation with a chick? Yes. You, you, you don't want to get home. I want to get home. Gary, and Gary was here, and I, I'll be honest with you, one of the relationships I had, we used to go out and drink every night across the street from oh. the studio. Gary had places to go, things to do, but he would come <laughs> with me across the, and I would be drinking at, until they threw us out. It'd be like 11 o'clock, place would be closed. It was Culver City. It'd be like 11 o'clock, he'd be throwing us out of there. But it's because I'm delaying coming home to what I'm looking forward to. Uh, so many people have just nightmare lives. I, I was in a situation once where I was uh, living with this chick in the bed while she was asleep. Instead of having sex with her, I would choose to masturbate silently. And I was trying to do it in like real short, quick strokes so that I didn't move my whole body so the bed wasn't vibrating. Because I was terrified that she would wake up and find me doing that and start What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> like, you know, she'd be angry with me. You if could I have asked me. Time. I would have done it yeah. for you. She caught me once uh, w once doing it to, to porno, and she got mad at me. <laughs> she was mad at me, like mad. Stormed out of the room. So that's what you like. Yeah, uh, me so silly. <laughs> <laughs> Liking hot naked chicks. <laughs> but they, she was mad at me. If I came home and she was watching porn and, fi you know, doing the stuff that they do, I, I would go, whoa, what? is going on you must be crazy horny you know should i be involved here or is this like your own little fantasy thing but i wouldn't be mad what are you doing what are you looking at other humans are you sexually aroused now you pig what? No. you know i wouldn't even understand that i'd be like cool which one is this is this one of mine <laughs> I'm like, oh, you still got VHS. These are buck. <laughs> they got all of my VHS collection I got rid of, man. <laughs> I'm still holding on to the DVDs, but VHS got to go. But I did have to get rid of some real classics, man, that are difficult to find on the Internet. You, you know? should have just taken them into Kinko's and burned them to DVD. It's too much work, man. I don't want anybody to know I'm a pervert. <laughs> I bring in some refrigerator box filled with pornos. Because <laughs> I got some old Nina Hartleys, man. Yeah, yeah. The, the old Big Bush days. Yeah. You know, Raquel Darian, you know, old school. Back when I was a you young have any, uh, Do you have any Tracy Lords? Uh, only the legal one. I uh, didn't get any damn. of the illegal ones. Yeah. Yeah, the illegal ones when she was young and freaky. How nuts is that? You 16, know, built like a woman. Somebody on Craigslist right now selling that video. Oh, I'm sure. They're all, I mean, you can get them in other countries. In other countries, they don't take it as seriously. You know, so I think if you try to get it, you can get it from some other country, but... Well, all right. Too, man. We're gonna, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with Joe Rogan. By the way, Joe Rogan, you're going to be appearing in Las Vegas, for God's sake, at the House of Blues. That's right, baby. Is that a comedy venue? I didn't even know that. We do comedy there once a year. I do Great. it right before New Year's every year, pretty much. And I love it there, man. It's crazy. It gets wild, you know, but that's what Vegas is. Vegas is just all these people that we're talking about that are driving slow on their way home and hate their jobs. Vegas is the place where no one's working. <laughs> That's just free ball time, you know, and that's what the last time I was there, I drank 18 shots in an hour. They had to drag me out of there. I don't remember getting back to my hotel where my friends carried me to my room and I woke up three hours later and get on my flight like a man because I know how to handle whiskey. <laughs> and because sadly I've been there, I can handle a ha I can handle a hangover. It's that line to go through security at the airport when you're done oh, having a hangover. I was hammered on that plane. Ugh. I was hammered walking through. I was giggling, listening to my iPod. I forgot to take it off. It went off. I had to back up. It went through the metal detector. I was trashed. It was awesome. Joe Rogan will be at the House of Blues <laughs> coming up next Friday, one week from today at uh, 702 632 If you'd like to make a reservation and see Joe Rogan, many of you are probably going to Vegas for New Year's Eve anyway. It's going to be crazy, bitches. There we go. We'll come back with your phone calls for Joe Rogan. Tom, Tom, Tom. Who like it? Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom. Real Tom. I find you just an absolute specimen of um, complaint. The Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show from Hollywood at 1 800 5800 Tom. Joe Rogan is here. Oh, hell yeah. And uh, Joe's going to be at the House of Blues in Las Vegas next Friday. And uh, we got calls for Joe here. Let's take some 1 800 5800 Tom. It's Joe. 
Call him a Joe Rogan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What up, boys? Not much. What's up, dude? Hey, it was an honor to talk to you guys. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to talk to you as well. Hey, Joe, I got some questions about the UFC coming up. Okay. Uh, who do you think? Matt Hughes or uh, GSP? You know what? I never predict You know what's going to happen because uh, oftentimes you're wrong, especially in MMA, and I don't want anybody getting pissed off at me. What's up, bro? You thought I was going to get my ass kicked? Because that happens all the time. to <laughs> Just get a little touchy. But, uh, you know, look, if you look at the last fight, George St. Pierre completely dominated him. So Matt Hughes is going to have to come with something completely different. And if you look at the Koscheck fight, which was St. Pierre's last fight, I mean, he's fighting a really dedicated wrestler, and Koscheck, Koscheck wasn't able to take St. Pierre down, and St. Pierre took Koscheck down at will. So uh, it's a crazy fight, you know. Uh, it doesn't look good for Matt Hughes, but the dude's not a nine-time UFC welterweight champion for nothing, you know. And he wants this fight. So I, I expect that he has some sort of uh, a game plan that we're going to find very interesting. You know, he's probably going to try to avoid the striking and get George to follow him around and try to lure him into something where he can get him to the ground. I don't think he wants to stand with him, though. I agree, I agree. A little disappointed he didn't get to fight Sarah, but it's definitely a good matchup. Well, you know what, man? It's such a hard sport, dude. Those guys get hurt so bad in training. It's so hard for a guy to make it from, you know, contract signing to fight without getting injured, you know? I mean, you're throwing bones at each other all day. These dudes are, all they're doing all day is trying to kill each other. They practice killing each other. They're practicing with strikes, and then they're practicing choking each other. So, I mean, you get hurt, man. Knees get blown out, ribs get broken, backs get injured. I mean, that's what happens. To Sarah. Definitely. Also, I heard a rumor that sometime in May, uh, Anderson Silva is going to fight Dan Henderson. Can yeah, that's no rumor, that? man. That's not a rumor at all. Yeah, that's absolutely confirmed. Oh, man, that is going to be sweet. Yeah, I think it's March, though. I think it's March. Maybe it's May. I'm not sure. But if you look uh, on UFC.com, you can check it out. Fight of the year, man. All right, all right buddy. Thanks, guys. Tom, you're my hero. Have a good one. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. What's it like, Tom, to be a hero to so many young men out there? Oh. Do you feel like it's an off, off, awesome responsibility? It or? is. It is an awesome responsibility. But it's rewarding as well. It is rewarding. When I hear women calling in saying they've been treated like crap or they've been uh, pumped and dumped, it warms my heart to know that <laughs> one of my students was out there following my instructions. Or the guys who call in. I had one guy who called my show and... Uh, uh, he said to me, you know, um, I want to thank you because you've changed my life. He said to me, you know, I never knew I could be this happy. Um, yes, I have three children that I left, and uh, they never get to see me anymore, but I've never been happier, and I want to thank you for that. <laughs> well, those three it, kids will hopefully become strippers. And uh, Everything works out well. Put That's them where strippers come file. from. That's right. <laughs> They come from bad relationships. Let's be real. You like strip clubs? Oh, you know, you know, you got to crack a couple eggs to make some bacon. That's exactly or whatever. Right. Breakfast. That's right. <laughs> Omelet. That's <laughs> what the expression is. We're setting ourselves up for the future. There's going to be young women who, and you know what happens to girls? You know, when uh, dad leaves home, you know, they, they literally they need is male attention. Well, there is scientific evidence that they start to mature faster physically. Yeah, physically, yeah. That's a fact. <clears throat> So uh, ultimately, they're going to do things they're going to regret for the rest of their lives. And hopefully after they turn 18, then they'll do those things with us. Well, you know, it's not really set up that way, though. It's set up that way so they breed. That's what really is going on. They're yes. really, they're, they're, they want a man to take care of them. They want a man to knock them up and take care of the baby as quickly as possible. They want to mature. They want to get the sexual maturity faster. Of course, that's the basis of being horny anyway, uh, no matter what age you are. So... True. We just have to make sure to use a condom and then uh, do, do what we got to do. And then we have to make sure to guard that condom afterwards. I've heard some horror stories. Oh, yes. About women trying to take the condom and trying to make a baby with it. Is that, a, is that ever happened? Has that uh, has anyone ever given birth to a condom baby? The uh, Well, we, we've seen stories about that, but the NBA now, at the, at the beginning of the season, they always send some person around. They have to have all these meetings during training camp. One will be with the guy who warns you about gambling. One will be with the guy who warns you, okay, you know, you've gone from high school to making $20 million a year and people are going to try to take advantage of you. They have that guy who comes around and they have a guy who comes around and tells you there's going to be women who are going to take your condom and they're going to scoop out the contents and impregnate themselves. Is that possible though? Yes. Wow. What a proud moment. So what that I do is life. I keep a small <laughs> bottle of Tabasco sauce in my bathroom. Really? And every time I toss a condom, I pour some Tabasco sauce in there. So wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. 
<laughs> this is such an issue that you actually have taken a condiment and placed yes. it in your bathroom <laughs> specifically one. for the purpose of killing off those little baby sperms. No, no, for giving her a good third degree burn. In her hoo-ha? Yeah. Yeah, but the, what if the baby still comes out? Y you know. How about the smart thing would be, be to do it. would put poison in there? And well, then she dies. You go, I don't know what. I didn't poison her. I poisoned I don't my be, condom. I don't want to be the test case for that. But you could say you're a crazy person who's always afraid your loads are going to come to life and attack I, you. I have, <laughs> I have recommended this, guys. You know, we, we have had three guys call in who've been sued for this. Really? Sued. Sued for putting uh, Tabasco in the condom? And then the woman put it inside herself and burned herself, and therefore then she sued. And each Is it really that bad of a burn? I mean, it's not that bad of a burn in your mouth. You need to go straight habanero, bro. Well, Why are you messing around with Tabasco? That's well, for pussies. Actually, when I went out of Tabasco, I think that's where I'm I going got this next. stuff called 100% pain. <laughs> I put it on burritos, man. This stuff oh, is so rugged. Oh, they saw that rugged. at Farmer's Market. I've seen that. Dude, I, 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 as soon as I take my first bite, my forehead starts sweating <laughs> like a fat dude. I mean, <laughs> like a fat dude in Alabama sitting on a porch in the summer. It just drenched. Now, we've gotten the stories of guys hearing blood-curdling screams really? from the other room. Yes. Wow. Wow. So that's really common that women do that. Yes. Wow. That the the need to breed, baby. I know. It's strong. No, it isn't that. the need to breed. It's the need to take your money. Wow. That's what it is. I mean, really, if somebody just needs to breed, how about you go to artificial insemination? Yeah. You, if you should be able to prove that if a chick does that, that's a criminal. You know, that's a criminal maneuver. Because not only is that person trying to get money from you, they're trying to wreck your life by introducing themselves as a, a very important partner in your life forever. It is legalized fraud. It's the mm. one fraud that's legal. Well, the scary thing is when a guy gets his name on the birth certificate, and then you find out, even through a DNA test, that he's not the father. Once he has been uh, assuming the father position, that guy is still responsible for child support. That's when it gets crazy. Well, that's like, true. That's just nonsense. But it's set up so that a woman just has to lie, depending on the state. One year, two years. Yeah. Oh, honey, he looks just like you. But it takes at least two years to see what that kid's really going to look like. Yeah. Well, you know what? Look, it's sucks for the kid for sure and that's why it's set up that way because you know you know we don't want kids to have no money and no fathers and everything like that but you know this is fraud that the person's how know. many of these kids never would have been conceived if the mother couldn't get away with this oh a huge well the kind so of babies the problem of would take care of itself you wouldn't have babies being born without fathers raising them or without uh, support because women would know they couldn't get away with fraud yeah financially independent women don't go for the condom baby move that's no. not their move no you know? That's that's the skank move. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's, that's our telephone. That's a definitive statement, by the way. And yeah, don't get upset. All right, if you've done the condom move, you are a skank. That's a fact. How can you argue? With that? How dare you? I'll bet Same. there are the same people who exactly. pee on people's doorsteps. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Billy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? First time caller, big time. Fan. I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank you. Hey, what's up? What's up, Joe? You Billy, doing? what's up, brother? What's going down? Hey, I, I've seen a couple of your videos of you, like, punking um, um, Carlos Mantia. Like, I just want to say, you know, I give you props for that. I really enjoy seeing how you punk him and put him out there in front of us, to, in front of us, the viewers, to see how phony he is copying Bill Cosby and all the other greatest comedians out there, man. It's kind of weird to watch, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, I was, I mean, when I saw him, the first time seeing him on TV, you know, I was trying to become a starting to become a fan of his until you came out and you put him on blast. I'm like, you know what? I, I, I'm really thankful for that. Like, I don't know how many how many other comedians might be out there blowing off, um, you know, copying other great There's not that many as bad as him. That's that's about the worst I've ever seen in my whole career. And you know what? A lot of it is, uh, that's how a lot of comics start out. You know, I, you, the, one of the reasons why I did comedy, I used to repeat comics bits when I w would go to work. You know, I would like, I saw like Richard Pryor or Sam Kinison on HBO and then I would go to work and I'd go, dude, this guy's so funny. He did this bit and I would tell the bit and you get this big charge out of telling this guy's bit and everyone's laughing in the office and you're like, wow, man, that must be awesome to write that bit and say it. And some dudes just pretend. They just pretend they came up with it. And it's just, it's unfortunate. Yeah, I know. But um, I just want to say, you know, thanks for, for doing that. And I, I, I enjoy seeing you on um, UFC. I, I, and I, thanks, brother. Hey, toss that beer can out the window. Do you hear that siren? That's the cops yeah. coming for the pea monster. 
That was probably for Carlo Mencia. They're taking him out right now. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. We could only call. be so lucky. Oh, man. Joe Rogan coming up at the House of Blues. Hell yeah. In Las Vegas next Friday, December 28th. Tickets are available, and you can call right now and reserve your seat at 702 632 7600. Always good to see you. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Joe Rogan, House of Blues next Friday. The Tom Likas Show.